In this video, I am going to show you how to store a file to your iOS device so that we can have persistent data on the device that can be used between app sessions. So we can open the app, uh, make a change, save some settings, save some data, and then upon the next time that app loads, that data will still be available. So up until this point, all of the apps that you have been writing with me have all just been storing all their information in RAM. So when the app is closed, either on the device or in the simulator, it is gone and it does not persist. So what we're going to look at in this video is how to use our Xamarin iOS tools to build a little contact app that allows you to store data in a file that can then be accessed uh, when the app is open again. So in the interest of time, I've gone ahead and kind of frameworked this up so it is ready for us to look at. Uh, so in our, our main view controller, I have set up a uh, couple of labels and a couple of text boxes. So one to enter a name and one to enter a phone number. And then two buttons. When the add contact button is clicked, we take the information from the two text boxes and we prepare it for storage in a file. And when view contacts is clicked, we open this other view controller, which has a table view control on it. And that's how we'll be displaying our stored contacts. And those will be retrieved from the file that we create. So that data will persist over time. We could close the app and reopen it and then see all the contacts that we have saved. So if you've been following along with me, we've previously looked at how to create multi-view or multi-screen applications using a navigation controller. So if you're not familiar or you don't remember, you'll want to go back and check out that video. And then I also showed you how to use this uh, table view controller when we talked about using lists and those kinds of controllers. So if you need to go back and review that, uh, that would be helpful to get you started on this app. So I've already hooked all our navigation SIGs up and I have also added in two classes. So one class is for our contact, right, a name and a phone number, doing an override of the two string so I can choose how that information will be displayed. And then from that previous lesson, we talked about the table source class that controls a table view. Now this is the exact same class that I used in the previous example, except I've had to make two changes. First, we instead of using an array of strings, I'm using an array of type contact. And second, instead of a view controller, I have named this list controller. And that is the uh, controller that is controlling this uh, second view. So in my main view controller, we have that submit button, and I've already set up my click event. And I'm just doing a few things here. So first, I am getting the name and the phone number from the text boxes, and I am formatting a line in the way that I want this data to be stored. And so just using a regular .NET string.format I'm just setting up a comma separated uh, set of, of information. So it'll be name, comma, phone. And at, for each one of these that you wanted to store, it will create this line. And then we also looked previously on how to create these alerts, these UI alerts, using the UI alert controller. And so this is just a little confirmation. And then once we're done, we'll clear out the boxes so that if the user wanted to keep adding contacts in, they could do that. So how do we store the information? So first, we need to set up where we want to store it. And so I just set up a var. And I'm going to choose where I want this information stored. Now, one of the great things about using our Xamarin tools for iOS is that if you're familiar with the IO objects and IO classes of .NET, we're going to be doing the exact same thing. So using system.io up here in our using statement, and we're going to be using the exact same classes and, and pretty much the exact same pattern that we would use if we were just saving a text file in like a regular .NET application. So I'm going to use my environment variable to get uh, the folder path, and I'm looking for the environment special folder of uh, my documents. And so the phone or device that you are using this on or a simulator, uh, this is 
the document like personal document storage for the device. And now I'm going to set up a file name. And I'm going to use path.combine. So it's going to put our documents path together with whatever file name I put in here in the quotes. And so I'm going to call this my contacts.txt, whatever you want to name it. And then we're going to do file.write all text. And that takes in the file name, which is the combi combined documents and file name that we've chosen and the line variable which contains the data that we actually want to write out. And that's it. That's all it takes to write this file out. And so when we want to retrieve it, let's come over to our list controller. So in our view did load, this is our list controller. So over here where we're going to pull that data into that table view, we want to retrieve the information from the file. So first you'll add in your using statement over here as well, right, using system.io. And so these first two lines are, are identical. So I'm just going to actually copy them and paste them. So that sets up our path, basically, our path to the document area that we want, the file name that we have used. Now I'm going to set up uh, just a text uh, variable here, and we do file read all text. Right, we did write all text, we're going to do read all text, and we're going to use file name because that's the file we are reading. So what it's going to do is it's going to take everything that's in that file and it's going to dump it into this variable. Now we know that we stored those in comma separated uh, lines. Now I only have one line, so I can just pull out the two pieces of data from that one line. But if you had multiple lines, then you would need to loop through and do this process for each line in the file. But I'm just going to show you how to do this for the one contact, and then you can use your programming skills to expand upon that. So I'm creating an array, and I'm just going to split on the comma. So what this is going to do is it's going to take all of this text, it's going to split it out on the comma and each piece is going to go into this line array. So now what I can do is I can call my constructor for my contact class. And I'm just showing you how to do this because um, you don't need an object uh, class type you know, to do this. But I'm just kind of showing you how this looks in case, of course, we want to work in this object oriented environment. And so name is the first piece of information that we want in our constructor, and that should be the first position in our line array. So I'm just going to do line position 0, and then the second is line position 1. So that will create us a new instance of an object. And as we looked at previously when working with this table source class, we're set up to take in an array. So I'm going to create an array of items, right, type contact that will go in the table. So an array of type contact, I'm going to call it contact list, and we're just going to set that up to take in the my contact object. Oops, equal sign. Most important. There we go. So finally you can add your array as the source to the table. So I named it contact table dot source and it takes in a new table source and we feed it in to the constructor the contact list that we just set up up here and this as the owner because we're working in the list controller. So getting information out of the document is not difficult. We have to think about how we stored the information in the document so that we can pull it back out correctly. And then what do we want to do with that data once we have retrieved it? So go ahead and give that a build. Make sure we didn't make any mistakes and that it builds cleanly. And then I will show you what this looks like over here in my, uh, in my uh, iPhone simulator. Okay, so here we are on my Mac with my iPhone simulator. We can see our app here with our, our buttons. 
And so I can come down here to the enter name box. And if I can reach my keyboard from here, this is the hard part of trying to do this. I can type my name in there. And then I can come down to the phone number box and I can type in my phone number. Right, there we go. And so when I click submit or add contact here, uh, it's going to take that data, like we said, write it out to the file. We get this nice UI confirm box. I didn't put anything special in there. I was just showing you how to do that again. And so we click OK. And so that file's been saved. So if I click view contacts, then that loads this other uh, view controller over here. And we can see there is our data. And we don't have anything set up for this to do when it's clicked uh, in that table source class, but you could definitely hook something up uh, to where you know you click on this and it calls the person or something like that. But you can see that this is being displayed in the format that I gave the two string for the contact class. So since we're using an array of objects, when the table source class goes to display the object in the table, in that table view, then it's going to just automatically call the two string for that object and display it in that format. So you have now learned how to store data uh, persistently on your device so it can be used between app sessions. This is an excellent way to store information uh, like settings or user preferences or um, even persistent data like this where we might set up a, a little situation uh, kind of app where we need to store data and then retrieve that later. And so if you're familiar with the .NET I.O. classes, this hasn't really been challenging at all. Apple makes this very easy uh, to do inside of our Xamarin framework. I guess I should say Xamarin makes it easy. Uh, Apple really didn't have a lot to do with it. Uh, so I hope this has been uh, fun and you are now inspired to make some apps that store data.